I've played Guild Wars 2 for over 20,000 hours, and I've learned a whole lot and collected just about everything in the game. So it's a perfect time to go round again. Join me in the adventures of my completely fresh account known only as the Microtransaction Enjoyer on the quest of obtaining and unlocking everything in the game, from legendary gear and mounts to living world story episodes, maps, and ultimate gem store quality of life, purely through efficient and somewhat sensible gameplay. No real money required. I actually played a little bit off stream uh, last night, guys, because I was staying up really late to hard reset my sleep schedule. So I was like, okay, fuck it, what am I going to do? I'm just going to like do strike missions and fractals. And there was a good reason for that, by the way, because I actually wanted to do a few other things today and not just do like the regular grind. We still got to do Dragon's End, but I've actually got some really fun loot for all of you guys. I've got two sets of fractals to open. We have 75 scavenger bags, double to quattle um, set up there as well, and also some bounties of new Kaineng. Uh, while I was at that, I wanted to, I, do, I have decided in my unhinged mind that I do kind of want to push a little bit um, for the Unbound Magic Gathering tools. So I also converted all of my Imperial Favor as well. And we got another 177 gold out of that. So we've done um, we've done a little bit of stuff off stream. Very exciting times. We still have to do a bit of grinding. I think we've got until tomorrow to get these tools. It's going to be very, very difficult. Ooh, how long is it? 22 hours. That is actually going to be a bit of a problem. Um, yeah, that's that's not good. So it's two hours ago, basically. So, oh man. Well, yeah, two hours. Well, two hours ago and twenty minutes. That's a bit of a rough one, uh, right there. So yeah, it's five p.m. my time is when we have to have this by. That's going to be a little bit tricky. So we're going to have to do a bit of a bit of a longer stream to push for these. I think. The problem is gem prices are at just ridiculous right now. This is horrible. This is actually horrible. Six hundred ninety-six gold. Can we get that much gold? It's a good question. It's a very, very good question. I actually think I might fail. This might be a failed challenge, although it's an unofficial challenge, so it doesn't count. Um, but yeah, I actually might fail this. I'm not sure I can make it. Um, yeah, that's pretty brutal. I'm gonna go ahead and see. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and see what the what, what loot we get. Here we go. Let's go ahead and open all of our encryptions and our fractal chests. Here we go. Let's see if anything remarkable happens. Okay, yeah, ring. That's yeah, that's that's not really that good. Okay. Oh! Look at that! Ascended salvage tool. The, you know, <laughs> the good news about that is that we can actually get rid of one of our um, one of our ascended rings now. We have some infused rings in the bank, so we can actually process that, which Watch is quite nice. Scope. That is indeed quite nice. And yes, listen, I am aware of the fact that the unbound magic gathering tools are not worth it. That is definitely true. But here's the thing that you're missing out on. I like the Unbound Magic Gathering tools. Having them makes me happy, and therefore, I want them. Okay, you know, I get the little bit of value. I can have a second set of Gathering tools for my Mechanist or something like that. It's going to be a good time. It's going to be great. It's going to be cozy. It's going to be fantastic, right? So we're grinding, not because they're actually good, but because I actually like them. So that's the good news. But now we can use this Ascended Salvage tool. Let's go ahead and get some value there. Uh, volatile, rather. Sorry, the Volatile. Ga magic gathering tools. The unbound is trash. Okay. Here we go. We have an infused... Wait. Hmm. Now the question is, do I actually want to... Do I actually want... Oh yeah, we can salvage this. We can salvage this seal of the counter infused. I was thinking, do I want to salvage ascended celestial gear? Maybe not, because that's going to be very useful on a bunch of other characters. But we can salvage this trash. If you really want to, you can attune the ring before you salvage it. Okay, um, that is an option to you, uh, and you can get even more value. I'm not doing that. I'm lazy. Here we go. Boom. That was pretty trash, actually. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but still, five stabilizing matrices could be a lot worse, right? It, it, I've seen a lot worse than that. Right, here we go. We've opened our encryptions. There we go. That should be a good chunk of gold, actually. That should be some big money. Big money. Very nice. Very, very nice. Okay. So let's see how much gold that was. Ascended Light Leggings. Do I even care about that recipe? You know what? Let's get some... Uh, <laughs> we'll learn some Celestial Recipes. There we go. There we go. Alright, let's do this. Let's go. Whoa. Big money. 
huge money right there. Let's go ahead and open these bounties as well. Any ascended? Oh, no ascended. Unlucky. Oh, we got the miniaturized skiff engine. There you go. Uh, so we can get a, a skiff supercharger 3 for our jade bot if we want. But realistically, that's just going to sit in our inventory and do nothing. Uh, anything from Tequaddle? No. I'll tell you what, what, though. I did actually get one kind of medium roll from Tequaddle. I got this Aqua Breather. Uh, which, although it's not super useful for stats, you can see here that we can actually go ahead and sell it for 5 gold. Because it's like the, it's a skin that you can get. So there we go. Not too bad there at all, is it? Uh, so yeah, looking at the amount of gold I have right now, 256. Might be a little bit of a stretch to get those tools, you know, but maybe that's a good thing. Ooh, wow. Oh. You know, I'm actually really tempted to keep the skin. Because this is actually a rather cool skin. Look at that. It's like a purple glowing hammer. I was like, ooh, it named exotic. Big money. But actually, no, it's not big money. It's in fact one gold. Um, yeah, well, it's not ideal. You know what? Get out of here. Okay, I, you know, you disappointed me and therefore you get sold. Enjoy that. That's how it is. Do I need to uh, check every rare item for skins now? Um, well, if you want to be, if you want to be strict about it, then yes. In fact, you know, it, whenever you're dealing with unidentified gear, yeah, a lot of the time you actually want to open these, right? You want to do this. Uh, because the reason is, is because that happens sometimes. And that can be a precursor. Look at that. Wow. It can upgrade itself. Become incredible. Uh, but yeah, watch out for that. It can happen. Yeah, exotic prices are not once th they're not what they uh, once were. That's certainly true. That is indeed certainly true. Oh yeah, we've got some volatile magic too. Yeah, I have. I just converted all of my ice shards, eternal ice shards, into mistborn moats, and uh, that means it's time to get some volatile magic. Here we go. Three thousand there, and there'll be another two hundred and fifty worth of those um, over here too. Actually, so a good chunk of gold income from that uh, as well. And we can try and go all out. We're going to use our volatile magic. We're going to throw everything we've got at trying to accomplish this goal, right? It's a bit of a pointless goal, a bit of a troll goal. But, you know, you've got to you got to do something, right? You have to have some kind of aim. We have to have an aim in life. And my aim in life is to waste all of my gold. So I think I should definitely be, uh, you know, uh, well on course to making that happen. Uh, okay, let's sell these memories of Aureen as well. Goodbye, memories of Aureen. Okay. That's another 100 gold. Look, that's quite a lot, isn't it? I was going to get this lich. I want to kill the lich here, guys. I'm killing the lich. And then after we're done with the lich, um, I will go and do DRMs. And I'm probably going to do just all of champions, I think, today. We will literally play through every single DRM. What's the benefit of doing DRMs anyway? Well, it's actually surprisingly good gold, I think. Um, it will let me unlock all the masteries. Uh, but I might as well just do it now. Uh, the, the thing about this is that I can do the... Um, I can do the return to. Uh, we can do the return to stuff here. Uh, and that will give us a good amount of stuff, right? If we look at this, return to, uh, wait, return to Eye of the North. Oh, interesting. You got a lot of blue shards for doing that. Dude, we gotta get these blue shards going. We gotta farm these blue shards. But that's not actually what I'm after here. Um, I can get 250 Tyrion Defense Seals, 3 Prismatium Ingots, and 3 Mystic Coins. And that's actually pretty good. Uh, that is not bad yet, and it means I can unlock the um, eye infusion as well. So I need to get that uh, that done so we can actually high roll the eye infusion um, from the Dragon Slayer. You have to have the Dragon Slayer mastery maxed out in order to um, actually roll roll the eye. You've got to roll the eye. And yeah, it kind of needs to be a full party because you can solo DRMs, but it's just so much slower. Not because of the boss, actually, by the way. Um, the boss doesn't take that long to kill solo. The problem with with um, doing DRM solo is the pre-event takes so long, right? It takes so long. It's agony uh, back to back. Yeah, I don't really... Yeah, I, don't, I don't really mind them uh, so much, you know? I, I think that... Um, because they have combat in them, I think I'm okay with it. And what I like about DRMs is that the game at least tries to fight back a little bit. It, it's so weird to see, um, I guess, my, I think my taste in gaming is very, very weird. I actually don't really care what the game is, as long as the game tries to fight back and tries to win, at least a little bit. And Dragon Response missions, they try to win, um, which I personally really like, actually. Um, although, I wouldn't exactly do them daily, because there's, there there's better content in the game for sure. But I'm okay with it, because they, the game tries to kill you. Um, and anything where that happens, I'm pretty okay with it. 
Doing them all at once is still alright. That's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna do all of the dragon response missions in one go. For story and to get Dragon Slayer. I think I'll need to actually do some more mastery points. Although I should be able to get all of the mastery points while I'm doing the DRMs. Oh yeah, we've got to get this. We've got to do it with the CMs as well, right? Which are the CMs we want to turn on? Because there's a few. You only need to do two out of three to get the gold chest. So there's not much point in doing three of them. I guess we maybe. Well, I guess it depends, right? I guess it depends which one. The, the boons one is probably the worst. I think the. Um, you don't want to. Do you do want to do the boon one? Time and boss one. Yeah, the boon one is cancer, right? Because they just get like 25 might and stuff. I guess it's okay if you have boon removal. But yeah, yeah, boss health and timer. Because timer is obviously totally free. Uh, and yeah, there we go. It's time to do some dragon response missions. Some of the most hated content in all of Guild Wars 2. But I'm going to do it for a few reasons. Reason number one, we're going to go ahead and unlock ourselves the Dragon Slayer Mastery. That means we can have a, another chance to high roll the eye infusion, like a 2k item from Dragon Storm. It also improves the loot we get from Dragon Response Missions too. Wow, insane. Isn't that just fantastic? Oh, that reminds me. I better go ahead and unlock Electromagical Pulse too, because that means we just get more CC in the open world. We can use those way station things that players drop down, and we get a special action hotkey that gives us loads of AoE crowd control. Very powerful. Let's go ahead and grab that before we go ahead and move on into these DRMs. I will try and do every single dragon response mission in one go. Because uh, another goal that I'm actually trying to do here is this. Uh, what, because we're playing through story content here. And you'll, I'll be doing this whenever I play through story on this account, by the way. I figured I might as well just do the return to achievements. This is a series of achievements that Arena added to the game when they basically gave away all of the living world to fill some downtime um, before Ender Dragons. And the reward for doing basically every piece of story in the game and a bunch of achievements is a, a legendary amulet, right? And that, yeah, no ifs, no buts. You just flat out get a legendary amulet for free. Normally you'd be paying obviously like 2,000 gold or 1,500 gold for a legendary trinket of some kind. This is a complete, utter, free, legendary amulet, um, which is obviously going to be very valuable for us. And we can definitely go ahead and grab that uh, while we play through the entirety of the story. Additionally, you actually get some good loot for all of these two. Uh, for example, the one that we're going to be doing here. We're going to be getting Prismatium Ingots, Mystic Coins, Tyrian Defense Seals, and a Glittering Weapon Cache, in addition to some achievement points and the actual loot that we get just by playing through uh, all of this content. So in general, pretty high value stuff to be done. While we're on the way, we get a free precursor too, the Fragment of Prismatic Light, a 32 slot bag, which is going to be lovely, um, and a free Ascended Weapon too. So yeah, this is definitely a really good thing. Um, when you are playing through the story for the first time, um, you might as well be looking out for these achievements. Here it is in side stories, kind of like halfway down here. And just look at these. You can click here to see what you've got to do, what achievements you have to do. It usually involves like mining, doing events, chopping down trees, and then playing through the actual story and like a, a variety of other activities linked to this stuff. So that's basically how it works. Uh, and yeah, while you're playing through the story, just go ahead and do this while you're at it because, I mean, yeah, you might as well. You might as well. Ooh, yeah, that's a really fun bonus, by the way. Hello. You uh, might really want your Sky Scale. This is a very popular thing that you might want to go for. Get your Dragon Mount. Or you might want to craft Aurora and Vision. Well, do you know what's something really fun? Ain't it thought about this. If you complete the return to achievements, it pretty much gives you enough map currency to get all of those things. Because you need a lot of map currency to obtain those things. Like you have to like mine the rocks there to get a special currency for each map. Good news. The return to achievements actually shower you in this stuff. So if we look here, for example, and we go to... Um, like Sandsword Isles, we get 250 Dithlorite Crystals, which is all that you need to get the Sky Scale. Or you could just buy some Ascended with that if you wanted to, and you get a bunch of Volatile Magic as well. So yeah, very, very good for doing Vision uh, and Aurora, because the same is true here. You can see here that you get five sacks of Petrified Wood. That's 250 Petrified Wood, which again, boom, locks you in Aurora. Yeah, the exception to that is that you do need a lot, a lot of Kralkatite, okay? Um, a lot of Kralkatite. Uh, for, you know, for uh, Istan. But we don't talk about that, okay? Uh, just do a lot of Palawadan, right? Do some Palawadan. Have a good time. And do strike missions for Eternal Ice Shards. Ooh, nice. Okay, um, so let's get going on this story. We have to go to Radasum. Have I ever been there? I actually haven't been there. Uh, so we're going to go to Lion's Arch, and then we'll just walk there with this portal. Story begins. Maguma Explorer. Nice. Five achievement points for going to Radasum. I like that. 
Okay, let's roll. Wait, I have, to, I have to wait here because we're doing this with a party of five. And I've actually accumulated a team to play through the entire story today so we can have an uninterrupted story experience. This is the benefit of having friends. Okay. But I'm going to wait for everyone because we're going to have to start the story instance together. Because story instances are a bit weird in this game. If you start a story instance without everyone here, the other player won't be able to join it. They just get left behind. Quite funny. Um, but, you know, but, you know, not very, uh, not very good. Uh... <laughs> And, you know, there, there is another reason why I'm doing Dragon Response missions. I was resetting my sleep schedules. I've actually already played a, a lot today off stream, so I've already earned quite a lot of gold. Uh, and Dragon Response missions are actually surprisingly good if you can do them somewhat efficiently. If you just have, if you've done a lot of your daily lock stuff and you haven't got anything else to do, you don't really fancy fishing, for example. You're like, well, you could go and fish and grind some gold. You're not fancying a Drizzlewood. Then honestly, doing a few Dragon Response missions, particularly if they're daily, is honestly not a bad idea. Let's get in there. The story begins. Honestly, I don't really want to listen to the dialogue. I'm not interested. I just want a game. Basically, what's going to happen here is that, oh no. You know, can we trust Jawmag? No. Uh, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> and also, Primordius is big mad. And the destroyers are going to attack. And then do you know what happens? I'll tell you what happens. Then we have a massive all-out war all over Tyria, where destroyers and ice route attack various old zones in the game, and we must respond to all of them. We have to respond to a bunch of areas. Then we have Dragonstorm. Uh, then we win. And then the writers of the game cry. Because they were they had no choice but to cram all the story into one go while they were working on an expansion. You love to see it. Well. Yeah, here we go. They're about to, uh, they're about to erupt. I think this is one of the biggest uh, requested features, actually, because this is particularly true when you want to go back and do story achievements. There is sometimes a lot of dialogue in this game. You could actually consider that very much to the credit of the game. Like, you know, the ANEC team really did uh, splash out on the voice acting to make sure that the game has a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of immersive dialogue and narrative. When you're going back to play through it for achievements, yeah, these guys never shut the hell up, right? They just keep talking. Oh, and here we go. We're under attack. The destroyers have arrived. Uh-oh. Nice. We have five people here, so all this stuff is going to die pretty quickly. Uh, story instances in the game, they're not really... I mean, they're, you can do them with five people, but they're obviously not exactly tuned for that. They're very much designed to be soloed. Even dragon response missions. In fact, they do scale. You're about to see that doing them with the group is a good idea, though. Uh, but you absolutely don't have to if you don't if you don't feel the need, feel the urge. Let's go. Hmm. Destroy a problem at the docks. Oh dear. Let's go. Let's take him out. There's an achievement here. Oh, we have to do this within ten minutes. I think we should be able to get away with that. I think we can manage that, guys. Stay with me, chat. Relive. Relive the Ice Brood Saga with me. I think after this, we'll probably do a Dragon's End and then probably get some Drizzlewood Coast in. Because I actually do want to farm some gold. I'm engaging in the Pointless Gold Farm. Will I make it? The problem is that I don't have that much time. The sale ends tomorrow. This is, I never think anything through, guys. Seriously, what the hell is wrong with me? I should have thought it through a little bit more. Oh, this is my new favorite thing to do, by the way, guys. Um, sell stuff while you're doing content. So, I was going for a bunch of um, uh, research notes yesterday to uh, get some big money. And I, can, I got like an extra 170 gold or so. Uh, from research notes, I came up with a brilliant strategy that makes it more engaging and exciting. I made my inventory really small, like this over here, right? Check this out. This is big. This is big. And I was doing open world meta events. And during the meta event, I would use my extra actions per minute to reach over click a, a research kit and have it salvage a stack. And because a stack takes quite a long time to salvage, I was able to actually uh, s uh, generate 10,000 research notes while playing the game at the same time by having my inventory open the entire time. Because the thing is, um, 
you know, I don't like research, they're kind of boring, but I managed to find a way that it was exciting and, you know, high energy. And yes, I, I might even show that on stream at some point when I do some more research notes in the future. You, know, you just have them in your inventory, you have all the little potions or the items or whatever that you're salvaging. You just right click, salvage, right click, salvage, go, 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 go. Got 10k notes from that. It was fantastic. And, yeah, I'll give you all a little bit of a, bit of a spoiler here. Yeah, at some point in the future, I will actually upgrade our Imperial Favor operation to include Precursors. Because Precursors are actually significantly more profitable um, than buying the exotics from the statue vendor in Sighting Province. However, it is worth noting that obviously those items sell a little bit slower and require a bit more of an initial investment to pull off. But yeah, we'll definitely be throwing in a few of those Precursors. And it also requires 500 crafting and recipes. So we have to wait a little bit on that but we will get there nice and there we go primordus rising we get some Tyrian defense seals for that a mastery point which we're very much in desperate need of for ice brood saga to get dragons there. we need 20 mastery points by the way to finish off dragon slayer so we're gonna have to do a bit of mastery point grinding to get that done there we go there's our first one locked in and now we continue ah, yes. let's go okay good news the first dragon response mission begins. And yes, right. Before we get into this, I'm going to reiterate this tip here. If you're doing the return to achievements, notice this. Hang on. You must join. Oh, no. They went without me. Okay, because I was trying to explain this. You need to go through the story edition of the dragon response missions, otherwise it doesn't count for return to. So make sure that when you're playing through this, you can't just do this, I'd like to join a DRM, and then, you know, pick the, the appropriate one here. No, you need to actually pick the story option, because that will progress the actual story itself, and it doesn't just get you into the repeatable instance piece of content. Be aware of that. I need to wait for Ed, and yeah, now because of that story and thing, I can't join them, I have to wait for them all to leave and all to get in. And funny enough, this is actually one of the reasons why people don't do dragon response missions. It's not just the fact that the content is, you know, it's a little a little questionable. It's also the fact that the systems around it are pretty scuffed. I'm not gonna lie. But let's get in there. So what DRMs actually are, they're just, um, they're story instances, but they use old maps and kind of modify them. They'll, you know, change some about them. For example, Metrica Province, the Azura starter area, is now infested with, um, infested with destroyers. So now let's talk about one of the reasons why people don't like these. So <laughs> these all have like a template. They have a pre-event, usually some kind of escort event, and then a boss at the end. That's basically how they all go. And the problem with this is that, yeah, that can get a little bit repetitive and also a little bit tedious because some of the pre-events, especially if you do this solo, it's pain, okay? Like, that's why I'm doing this in a group because if you do this solo, it is doable, by the way. Even if you do all challenge modes, you could actually so- Oh, wait. Oh, wait, we need to turn on the challenge modes. Hang on a minute. Uh, yeah, even if you do challenge modes, these are actually very soloable. They scale down. Um, to, to, to how many players that are in the instance. It's just tedious to do it, and it takes longer than doing it with a group. There's actually some genuinely really interesting tech. The technology here is actually really cool. I'd love to see them use a similar tech to make story dungeons, like dungeons in the in the game, scale down to players as well. I'd also like to see um, the technology of using old maps and modifying them, you know, so that, you know, that kind of stuff happens. I think that's really fun, actually. Uh, okay, timer and... Um, enemy champions, right? I think. Yes. I think that's the way we want to go. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. If we do two challenge modes there, that basically gives us more loot at the end. So just do two ones. Uh, basically, the ones I selected were a timer and the at last boss is harder. Those ones are the one you want to go with. The middle one there basically gives all the enemies boons, which is a really pe big pain in the ass. You can, of course, do that one as well if you want to, but you only need to do two out of the three to get full loot. But yeah, this type of tech is actually pretty cool, to be honest. There's a lot of fun things about the Ice Rude Saga that's actually rather good, but again, they were just too rushed and weren't able to execute it properly, and, and that really drags it down. Um, and yeah, like the, again, like these pre-events here are just a bit of a pain in the ass, to be honest. Um, a bit of a pain, a bit of an inconvenience. Where are these golems? Okay, we've got to go repair this golem. Let's go. Boom. Let's power this golem up. We need to kill... We need to go get some scientists here as well. Okay, here we go. Boom. Did I get it right? I think that did it. There we go. Golem repaired. Very nice. We don't actually want to kill any more destroyers. We need to go and... Um, we need to go ahead and... Repair some golems and rescue scientists. I think someone's probably rescuing the scientists right now. Yeah, they've already done that, so we need to repair a golem. 
Here we go. Let's get a toolbox and do that. The other thing that... This is definitely um, going to be a bit of a personal preference thing, actually. But I actually like the way the storytelling is done in DRMs. It's very ambient. You know, you'll be moving through and things will be happening around you. It's very showing, not telling you. I've always found that a lot of story in games, especially MMOs, is very exposition focused and very light on gameplay. You're watching NPCs talk to each other and scripted set pieces play out. Dragon response missions are actually much more akin to Guild Wars 1 missions, where you're playing through a scenario and the story is expressed to you through the gameplay. Personally, I really like that. I understand that not, that's not everyone's cup of tea, but I actually really like it. Um, the style, the the method for delivering the story. But yeah, that's uh, that's my take on DRMs. But as you see us play through all of these, you will notice a few similarities. Okay. Uh, <laughs> One thing that's also um, interesting about um, Dragon Response missions, and this is pretty cool actually, they're kind of open world maps. So for example, they actually have vistas in them, and they have mastery insights in them. You can see here that I'm able to get an Ice Brood Saga um, mastery point by doing this. And you definitely want to grab these, because believe me, you'll need them. Ain't were very stingy with Ice Brood Saga mastery points. You definitely wanted to get these here. Um, and yeah, they're actually in the Dragon Response missions, which is pretty cool. I kind of like that. I like the fact that there's like explorable stuff, um, you know, kind of baked into the actual instance, which is nice. I like that. Very, very cool. The, as you can see, this is the escort quest component. The NPCs are a bit wonky. They can get stuck sometimes, but at the end, it will be boss time. Hooray! Exciting times. DRMs. Yeah, this is actually a bit of a side effect. Because they are so linked to the open world, this mastery point actually appears in the overworld, which makes it appear like there's a mastery point, but there actually isn't, because it's inside an instance and only in a DRM for Ice Brood Saga, not for the core game. Like I said, a little bit weird. As you can see, the timer on this thing is very generous, by the way. It gives you like a 20-minute timer. Uh, realistically, it's going to take us 10 minutes to do this, uh, approximately, I'd say. This is definitely another nod to Guild Wars 1, by the way. The way they named these NPCs. Destroyer of the Iron Hammer line. This is how destroyers were actually named in the original Guild Wars 1, right? And I think that Dragon Response missions were heavily inspired. And in fact, a lot of Ice Brood Saga was actually heavily inspired by some of the design principles that they had in um, Guild Wars 1. For example, the Way Station, I think it's very similar to PvE-only skills that existed in Guild Wars 1. Is there an extra... There's one thing here we also want to be watching out for. Is there like an achievement we should be doing here um, to maybe obtain an extra mastery point? A lot of these Dragon Response missions have an achievement that basically just means don't be an idiot and do it vaguely well. Uh, and you can get yourself a, kind of like a bonus... A, uh, a bonus mastery point. I don't think there's one here on Metrica Province though, so I think we're fine. It's only on some of the later ones, I think. But there is a, a channel mastery point in basically all of them. So there is that... You know, some, this boss is not very exciting, but do you know the other thing that's really fun about Dragon Response missions? Is that the bosses are actually not half bad, right? They're actually very comparable, I'd say, to Fractal bosses. Not this one. This one is a bit like, okay, well, it's a champion. It's got a lot of health. It doesn't really do anything. But some of the later ones actually have proper mechanics um, that are really cool. Actually, like some genuinely semi-interesting boss fights, right? That are, again, very much in line with what you might see in a Fractal. The only sad thing about this is that I'm not going to get bonus loot. Because this is a, another really weird part about the Ice Fruit Saga mastery line here, Dragon Slayer, is that almost all of these achievements give you more loot from Dragon Response missions. Right, so the fact that we don't have all these masteries will actually somewhat reduce the amount of loot we're going to get here. But it'll still be pretty good. It gives me, it gives you one of my favorite currencies in the game, actually. Uh, it gives us Tyrian Defense Seals. And these things are actually really good because they're worth quite a lot of gold, but they're also quite gambly. And I, uh, I do like a little bit of high rolling here and there, you know? It's a good time. Boom! There it is. Dragon response mission. And we actually get our first return to achievement. We get our... And this is kind of what I was after here, right? We get these chests. And I also get prismatium ingots, which we can just directly sell. Uh, these are not going to be super useful for us. So we're just going to sell them. I think now it's going to ask us to do another two dragon response missions. Okay. Prism Wildlands. Let's go ahead and go to the next one. Let's go ahead and enable these challenges. It looks like this player's doing it. That's fine. And then we'll go ahead and get started. Let's grab this waypoint, actually, while we're here. Can we get it? I think we can. Yep, we can. Nice. Look, we just unlock waypoints while we're doing it. So, again, we're into this next one now. We can see that the pre-event is a little bit different. Uh, but it's, you know, it's, it's a similar theme, right? We have to put out water. Uh, put out water, put out fires, kill some destroyers, and then uh, activate some seed turrets. So, nothing super crazy here. 
you can actually optimize this a, a fair bit as well. There actually was a tournament run by uh, my uh, guild Hardstuck, in fact. That was a dragon response mission at tournament. It was exciting. Oh yeah, it's also worth noting that um, for every... The pre-event has like a default five minute timer. The event will just start after five minutes regardless if you succeed or not. Um, but for every one of these you complete, you get a morale boost. Which actually is a pretty drastic increase to your stats. Which uh, just, you know, is going to make things a lot smoother. So you really want to get the pre-events done here. And of course, uh, if you speedrun them, it just speeds the entire process up so you can go a lot faster. I've got to say one thing as well. I'm a little bit sad that we never saw the full potential of Ice Brood Saga because they moved on to the expansion instead, but I absolutely love this music. I don't even, I don't know, what, what, what this is just so, when I heard this for this, I was like, whoa, what the hell is going on here? This is not like your classical, you know, normal video game orchestral theme. We've got something a little spicy here. You know what I'm saying? I like it. Let's crank it up. Ooh, it's rat jam here. Oh yeah, Nika's bringing up this other thing. There's also this system where you can have like a, a different faction. So you can have, you know, the Olmakan come and help you. You can have the Priory help you, all this kind of stuff. Like various NPCs can actually come and help you out basically. Um, and they give you like a special bonus. It's like another, an yet another system attached to this. It, 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 this definitely was a very big experimental phase um, for, the, for the devs. I think they just kind of threw a bunch of random shit uh, into the game system. Like, ah, fuck it. Just, just, just add another system. It's fine. Yeah, this is strangely. It would be good to have a scrap it. You can even stealth the NPCs and you can kind of run past some of the trash ones and stuff like that. But yeah, having super speed is really nice here because you can make these NPCs move faster. You can see that by adding swiftness. And that means we can go a lot faster, which is quite nice. We don't have an engineer either, so we actually don't have the ability to kind of break one out. So the goal when you're doing DRMs, it's always going to be this, basically. You want to kill all these monsters as quick as possible, or even kill them before your NPCs can catch up. The reason for this is because the thing that's going to slow you down here isn't really the mobs. It's going to be the fact that this happens, right? You can see how slow uh, the NPCs are, right? They really they really like to hang about. Oh, I've gotten a golem, too. Look at that. And this is kind of the help, right? So basically, a golem answer is helping us here. So now I have the ability to fire a water cannon, right? Look, boom, 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 And you can actually see that, you know, the, these ones can actually be quite strong in terms of, like, the help they can actually provide, but I don't want to be a golem. Screw that. Screw that. Where is the mastery point here? I think there is one lurking around. I guess it's a little bit later on. I think it's, like, when you walk through this part here is where the mastery point is. Yeah, look at, look at the DPS. I think it's good for a DPS to have that because you can really blast with that golem. It does, it does a really, really big damage. Yeah, look, is this, guys, did they tell us about Mechanist early? Is this what this was? Was this Mech? <laughs> they leaked it in the Ice Brood Saga. Because <laughs> look, it's a ranged Mech that does incredible DPS. <laughs> I think they knew. I've always thought this is a very pretty area, actually. It's very lovely. Um, it's a very... Very nice place. I kind of like these, um, you know, these wooden planks. It's weird to say this, but it reminds me of Ty the Tasmanian Tiger, which is also a great video game. Very unrelated to Guild Wars 2, though. Um, yeah. This is a really nice... Look at that. I like that. Nice. Mastery point obtained. As we uh, level up this mastery, we can pick up these orbs, too, and they'll give us boons. And eventually you get special abilities that, like, when you use your elite skill, you get five stacks of stability. And, well, you can get a big eye, right? Again, the thing that we're actually looking for here is the final mastery because, bear in mind, we're doing Dragon Storm all the time, right? We're doing it every day. Dragon Storm has the ability to drop this, a pristine dragon's eye. Just rip the eye out of the dragon. And that would be a big high roll. Now, again, I actually wouldn't use that high roll in this account. I'd give it to the guild. Uh, that's one of the rules that I've set for myself here is there will be zero high rolls. Wait, are the NPCs stuck? Classic. Oh yeah, they definitely are. I think if you go too far ahead, they get confused. Uh, and that drop is se semi-realistic too. Like, if you do Dragon Storm every day, you're actually pretty likely to see it. It's a bit like the Aurelium. Or Aurelium from Octovine. It's a very rare drop, but if you do Octovine every single day, you're actually pretty... You have a pretty high chance to actually see it. Oh, this one's a bit weird. You actually don't want to let it get down here. You want to try to um, CC it as quick as possible, don't you? Because it, oh yeah, no, you, you want to let it go, don't you? Because it leaps to the bridge. It's, it's like weirdly hard-coded. This is a really weird, weird one. So it has like, it, this one's special move is it will leap to the bridge and send out a shockwave. 
but it's like hard coded to where it leaps. It always leaps to the exact same spot. It's very unusual. As you can see here, it's going to do it now. Wait, is it? I guess not. Well, I, I guess it's going to do nothing. You can see that it's hard coded to leap there. So you kind of want to find it on the bridge so that when it leaps, you don't lose any uh, DPS uptime. Okay. Destroyer down. Nice. Well, let's nuke this thing down. There we are. Big damage. Oh, let's pump. I do have alacrity, and I like that. Oh, no. Dude, what am I doing? I'm trolling. I'm actually trolling. Look at that knockback. Great dodge by me. Could have taken an Aegis to uh, actually uh, involve that. I should have used stability. I should take the elite mantra here, really, because it does spam a lot of CC. Well, I grief my team. And it feels bad. Okay, there we go. I think that is the gold chest. Yeah, there we go. Two out of three challenges. Gold chest completed. Wow. Very good. Absolutely insane. Okay, wonderful. There'll be one more here. Then we have to go into the next story step after that. I think they're kind of in like bunches of three. I think some of them are bunches in four. Some of them are bunches of three. So let's do that. As you can see, we're just piling up a lot of these Tyrian defense seals. And after we're done here, we'll talk to this vendor over there and we'll grab ourselves some loot boxes. But it's okay because they're in-game loot boxes. Ah, this is the first kind of semi-interesting um, dragon response mission. So this one actually has some mechanics. There's also a bonus mastery book for not getting hit by any of the shockwaves. And the, me well, meteors more specifically, actually. So we're going to go ahead and attempt that. Meanwhile, are you ready? Are you excited? That's right, gamers. It's time for another pre-event. That's right. Prepare for pre-event content. So the, the rescue events, look, we can rescue this chicken, for example. Can we actually? Oh, I can pick up the chicken. Evacuate the chicken. But you run around, you just talk to these terrified locals, then you just make them follow you back to the entrance, pretty much. That's it. You kill a bunch of destroyers, put the fires out, and we're good to go. I think that's probably enough. Because, uh, actually, no, there are zero citizens rescued right now. I think someone else will be doing a few, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah we have six people rescued. I'm actually just going to run with the chicken, guys. I'm taking the chicken. I'm not, uh, I'm not leaving it here. I'm not, I'm that sad. I picked up the cock. Let's go. <laughs> I like how they're identical as well. The, the <laughs> nice. We've made it. Uh, I'm just going to quickly check that we've got the CMs enabled. Because we do want to have that for big loot. We actually do. Good. We have those two on. Fantastic. And let's kill some destroyers. And then we're basically done with the pre-event. Yeah. So pretty quick one here, as you can see. This destroyer is dead. That one over there is dying too. So we're almost good to go then. Yep, that's it. Nice. Done. All three of them locked in. Easy peasy. Double CM enabled. And there's also a mastery point. There's actually just a bit of RP here. Like the NPC mounts up on a raptor and runs over. You can just wait for them there. You don't have to wait for them actually. In fact, I think you can even kind of get started in pre-position beforehand. And we'll grab the mastery point while we're moving over too. The good news is there will be some variety later on. As we will... <laughs> we're going to end up... Fighting against Ice Brood, not just destroyers the entire time, so don't worry. Don't worry, there's variety, guys. Wow, wow, that's crazy. Another nod to Guild Wars 1 here. The dwarves will help you and give you Alcar's Alchemical Acid, which was a special thing that the dwarves in Guild Wars 1 made to combat the destroyers. And it's actually very effective. You can just, you know, throw this on them and they take a lot of damage. Here we go. The event begins. So this is the other thing. This is not an escort. This is a defense. This is a, the other... This is the other thing you can expect from DRMs. We have a defense mission. Wow. So the, what you want to do here is to speed this up. I mean, it doesn't matter that much, obviously. But this is the destroyers attack from different directions. So spread out, right? That's what you want to do. You want to make sure that you're spread so you're clear, clearing all of the waves as quick as possible. Because if you're all in one place, then the waves are going to take a bit longer to get rid of. Defeat the boss without getting hit by meteors or shockwaves while the stronger champion challenge is active. So yeah, that's what we've got to do. Now, this one's going to go down. I'm going to probably just use the acid on the boss when it spawns. Oh, I can refill. I could use it now as well. 
Oh, there's like a little mini boss that spawns over here, isn't there? Yeah, there's this guy. Yeah, yeah, the the Ember Knight. Ooh. Got him. Okay, so now we're going to be a little bit careful and just play very, very safe and not get hit by any meteors. Because then I get a bonus, a bonus mastery point. Oh, wow. What the? Are you kidding me? That's keeping me in combat? Are we serious right now? I'm not even going to make it before they killed it now. No, I'm going to make it. Right, let's go. So I'm just going to play super, super safe here. Just so we can actually, uh, you know, not get memed. Okay, so this one actually has some interesting mechanics. Here's fire tornadoes that will throw you in the air. And also uh, phases and will throw down meteors. So these are the ones we have to not get hit by this stuff, right? So don't get hit by that. Watch out. Oh, yeah, we have to kill the dis uh, the fissures to actually progress the event. Let's go ahead and do that. And just watch out. See these things? That's what we don't want to get hit by. It's going to move. It's getting a little bit spicy, isn't it? We're being challenged. The challenge. Okay, is that two? Where's the last one? It's over oh, it's over here, isn't it? Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Again, for this, you want to just spread out a little bit so you can get these done efficiently. Because as you can see, we're now kind of wasting some time here. Let's use our acid. Kill that fissure. Get him. Got him. And the boss is back. Wow. Let's get him. Let's do this. It's also a bunch of projectiles, so throwing up a few reflects are pretty good. Oh, see him first? Yes. Bosses moving is one of the cardinal sins of Guild Wars 2. We get very angry when that happens. I like my bosses standing still and tanking all of my attacks. <laughs> my favorite. Watch out for that tornado, because these will just fling you into the air. Good. And then we're just going to blast this thing down. Then we have another intermission phase where we have to kill those fissures. And then the final thing where we just kill it. 15 minutes on the timer. So pretty generous, as you can see. Watch those tornadoes there. There we are. Good. Onwards. Be another set of fissures now. And let's roll. Okay, again, we're going to watch out for these tornadoes and just nuke the hell out of this boss now. Watch out for that. Okay. Good. You can see, see him again, and that will probably be the end. Yep, that should be the burst. A defiance bar is broken. The boss is getting blasted. Let's go. And there it is. We've done it. We didn't get hit. Mastery point is mine. Let's go. Don't leave DRMs too early, by the way, because if you do that, you get in a bit of a weird situation um, where... <laughs> Where the chest won't actually spawn, you won't get the loot. So watch out for that one. Defending Tyria. Complete the story chapter. Defending Tyria. Nice. There we go. And now we have to do some more RP. Ah, good news. We can actually level up our first dragons, Dragon Slayer Mastery. Very good. All right. Let's talk to Aureen. And how many thingies are we up to now, actually? We're already up to 429 Tyrion defense seals. Yeah, we're getting actually screwed by not getting... We don't have enough um, We don't have enough masteries there to get full loot there, but that's fine. I'll accept that. We already have enough mastery points to get great champion, and we'll continue to get a lot more as we proceed as well. Which is good. Okay. Yeah, I've got to say it, though. I do have to say it. DRMs... did actually get... A bit of a bad reputation. They got flamed harder than they should have done. People were already really upset with ArenaNet at this point. It was more like dragon response missions were like the, the, the straw that broke the camel's back. It, <laughs> it wasn't that bad. But the thing is, it, was, it wasn't getting better. And because it wasn't getting better and people were already... like, I would say the morale in the community, like the community sentiment towards the game was probably the lowest of all time when this content was being released. And so it just created such an extreme burst of negativity. Um, because of that, it was, it was a disaster. It was a complete disaster. I'm not just saying that now in retrospect, by the way. Um, I actually made several videos defending Ice Brood Saga. It's probably why some people call me a sellout. Um, but to be honest, it's because people didn't listen to the actual video and what I actually said. Alright, we did it! 
Okay. I'm going to get my dragon boon. There we go. Look, we actually have it. Look at that. We're able to carry it into another dragon response mission. Wow. Yeah, they added this absolutely bizarre system. Basically, you get these two buffs. You can have Boon of the Deep Flame, and you also have one for Jawmag as well. And you get glowing hands, and basically you get bonuses. And you can carry them into dragon response missions, and every time you do a dragon response mission, the duration refreshes. It's very unusual. Sometimes you're not happy with just one system. Sometimes you have to add 15 systems. Yeah, this is the one thing that is very unusual. This is a bit depressing, actually. So you get, like, a special current, a special material called Prismatocyte. But here's the weird thing. Prismatocyte is actually useless. Well, I guess not technically useless. You can use it to get certain rewards in the game. But you can't convert it into gold. It's one of the very few uh, materials in the game that's actually worthless. Um, because if any, the only recipe that it's for is for making Prismatocyte ingots. But the ingots are cheaper to buy than they are to craft. It's absolutely bizarre. Nice. Roaring flames completed. Can we get the next... Wait, it's unavailable? Oh no, dude, I'm an idiot! I forgot... Oh, I forgot how these worked! No, I'm not leveling up my mastery XP! Because you have to do the thing, you have to buy the crystal! Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's unfortunate. Yeah, to unlock those masteries, you have to buy a crystal from a vendor. Unfortunate stuff. You hate to see it. You hate to see it. It's a classic mistake. But that's fine. We're not really falling that by mind. It's not the end of the world. It doesn't matter if we get the. Uh, it doesn't matter if we get the. Um, like a you know, like one hour later, you know. We've lost a, a minuscule amount of XP progress. It's all good. It's not copium. Yeah, so what you have to do here is you have to defend these two locations. So you spread up into two groups. Uh, and, well, yeah. Kill the Svarnir. Take them all out. Yes, it's Jawmag time. Variety is happening, my friends. What, where, it probably says in the mastery, right? Purchased from a faction vendor. Ah. This guy, maybe. What have you got? Ah, dra ah, here we go. Dragon Mastery Crystal 1. Very good. Uh, that's that one. Dragon Mastery Crystal 2 from the Dwarfs. Dragon Mastery Crystal 3 from the Exalted. Dragon Mastery Crystal 4 from the Tengu. Is that it? Dra- oh, whoop. Another one. And that's it, I think. There we go. From the Olmakan. That was expensive. I'm a little sad about that. My defense seals. They're gone. Uh, now it's RP time. All of them done, though. Not too bad. Yeah, those seals... Oof. Oof. Sad to see them go. But it had to be done. We must increase our mastery level. I've fallen behind. 236 hours and a pathetic 186 masteries. How depressing is that, guys? I was doing so well. One mastery point an hour, and now look at what's happened to me. But I guess that is because I haven't been focusing on masteries whatsoever. So that does make sense. Yeah, you just get max rewards in Dragon Storm, and it gives you the uh, potential to drop the Giga Infusion, which is what you really want. If you have, you need to have uh, these boons, then you can get the Giga Infusion, which is like a 1k drop, 1.5k drop from Dragon Storm. Just another gamble to put into your daily. But again, like, it's it's kind of one of those ones where it is a high roll, but it's not like, ridiculous. Like, something like a Chak Egg Sack or a Confetti, realistically, you're never going to get it, like, if you're being honest with yourself, and, you know, you're not on Copium. But something like um, the... Dragon Eye or Aurelium, it's, it's kind of like semi-realistic. It's not guaranteed you're going to get it, but it's not completely insane to think that you might actually drop it. So it's definitely worth getting. It's going to drop, guys. My next Dragon Swarm. Every Dragon Swarm is going to drop it, but again, we, we need to actually have literally everything uh, at that point. So yeah, it's going to take a while. It's going to take a while. I think they need a decent amount of experience. But then again, I do a lot of strike missions and Drakkar. So I think we're going to get through this pretty fast. 
And we need another nine mastery points. That's not going to happen from just this. We're going to have to do some other things as well. But we still have the rest of the story to play through. And we also have Drizzlewood Coast. I'm definitely going to be probably abusing a few Drizzlewood Coast runs uh, on this account at some point. Because it just is pretty good. And it'll be good experience as well. There's a lot of XP to be had there on Drizzlewood. I'm not going to do too much of it. Because uh, I, do, I don't find it super exciting. But it is worth showing how the rewards work there. Because it does give you some pretty fat loot. We did it. A little bit scuffed, but, uh, you know, we got there. 4%. 3%. 0%. Nice. Got him. All right, we did it. Another mastery level up. We love to see it. Very good. DRM chest done. Nice. More RP, then Dragon Storm, and we're good to go. We might be a little bit late to Dragon's End, but that's fine. There it is. All of that done. Return to Dragonstorm completed. Nice. Champion's End done. That part of the story is done there as well. We love to see it. Very, very nice. Just in time for Dragon's End. Now let's go spend our hard-earned Tyrion defense seals, shall we? We can get the payoff. I think Olmakan is actually a bit better. Yep, I just checked it is. So we're going to go Olmakan here instead. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so how many can get? We can get 28 of these boxes. Let's do that. That should be pretty decent, actually. This should be a decent chunk of gold. So let's go ahead and do that. Right. Here we go. Boop. Uh, did we get anything super exceptional there? Not really. Uh, I'm just going to pick the... I'm actually going to pick the Mystic Coins instead of the Glittering Skin, because I, I don't care about the skin. I take the MCs. So a good chunk of gold. We got nine Mystic Coins from all that. Oh, we got 91... 91 hardened leather sections. Can't complain about that, to be honest. Got some fangs in there as well. Not horrible. Yeah, some pretty good stuff there. Not bad, not bad. Not bad at all, actually. That'll be a decent chunk of gold that we can go ahead and liquidate. And yeah, let's let's just see how much gold we have after that. And then after the dragon's end, then I'll decide if I'm going to go for the tools or not. Because we are going to have to do a bit of grinding um, to get there. And we'd have to, I'd have to stay up a, quite late today to make it. Let's see, 690 gold. Um, that is quite a lot. How much am I worth right now? I'm worth 594. That's probably going to go up a fair bit. Oh uh, yeah, with a with a double Dragon's End, if I do a, like almost like a back-to-back -back Dragon's End, that actually wouldn't. That's not going to be that bad. 